Nice try, but Garrett... Tekken terminology. Tekken 7 is a great game and eSport. But when you hear commentators or players talk about the game, it can be a bit confusing. This is where you want to go in on the opponent sometimes with CD3 plus 4, which gives you that invaluable and rare for Kazuya high crush. This mostly is due to the long legacy of Tekken and its community. But I believe this shouldn't stop anyone who is willing to join the fun or just sit back and watch the excitement. If you're watching this when it comes out, Tekken World Tour finals are happening right now as we speak. And with Tekken 8 on the horizon, there couldn't be a better time to get into this game. Hence this video. So stick around for a few and I'll tell you everything you need to know about speaking Tekken. This video took a lot of work and I'm really proud of what I've done. I'd appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed to the channel. It's free and does more than enough to support me. And more videos like this. Buns and Notation There are a lot of attacks in Tekken. So to make things simpler, moves are usually shorthanded to a direction and a number. The directions are very self-explanatory. Only thing to remember is that forward means toward whichever way your character is facing, and back is the opposite. The numbers refer to your character's limbs. Left arm is 1, right arm is 2, left leg is 3, and right leg is 4. Knowing this allows every Tekken player, no matter the controller of choice, to know what button to press. So for example, instead of saying Glorious Demon God Fist every time Kazuya does this move, as cool and angsty as it sounds, just saying forward 1 plus 2 is much easier and universally understood. Movement The moving around in Tekken starts at a pretty simple basis. You hold forward to walk forward and hold back to walk backwards. Doing this will also block attacks, more on that later. If you double tap forward, you'll dash forward. If you double tap backwards, you'll dash back. If you hold up, your character will jump. If you hold down, your character will crouch. Pretty simple so far, right? But what's interesting is that Tekken is a 3D game. Unlike Street Fighter or other 2D fighters, each player is able to move either into the foreground or background. This is done by either tapping down or up respectively. So you may be asking, why is this so cool? Why is it important? Well, to put it simply, this allows both players to go in and out of ranges in the X, Y, and Z axis. There's a lot you can do with this, but for the most part, it means you can completely avoid damage without having to block and retaliate. Advanced Movement In Tekken, movement cancels movement. This allows for more advanced movement techniques, the most notable and most widely used being the Korean backdash. This makes it possible to not only move back faster, but also allows you to block while retreating. This is just one application of advanced movement techniques, and if you want to learn more about it, I suggest asking me in the comments or looking up guides on YouTube. There are tons. Universal Stances Tekken is built on a number of universal stances. But first off, what is a stance? Well basically, it's any state a character enters that changes the available move pool of said character. It's much easier to show you what I mean so here, look. When Kazuya is standing and presses 3, he does this. But if instead, he is crouching and presses 3, he'll do this. And currently can't do that attack from earlier, because he is no longer in the standing state. Even going from this crouching state back into standing is a stance called while standing. If we press 3 during this while standing stance, He'll do this move. As you can see, all three attacks are done by simply pressing 3, but differ based on Kazuya's current stance. The universal stances are standing, crouching, while standing, while running, while jumping, and while grounded. 
grounded and oaky. Once a player gets knocked down near their opponent, they are in a pretty bad situation. There's not much you can do to fight while laying on the ground. So the knockdown player wants to get back on their feet as quickly and safely as possible. Meanwhile, the player standing over them wants to keep them down to keep his advantage. This is what makes up what the Tekken community calls Okizeme, or Oki for short. Attack Ranges Most attacks in Tekken fall into three main categories, high, mid, and low, along with a smaller group of moves called Special Mids. A large part of all interactions that take place within a match of Tekken revolve around this mechanic. In order to not get hit, you must defend or evade correctly. Highs can be blocked by standing or evaded by ducking. Mids can be blocked by standing but will hit a ducking opponent. Lows must be blocked by ducking. Special mids can be blocked while standing or ducking. Both lows and special mids can be low parried. Frame data. Frame data basically boils down to math, and can be quite honestly one of the most boring parts of Tekken, especially to new players. But it is so important and worth understanding if you're thinking of playing the game yourself. For now, I'm going to be as brief as possible. Tekken runs at 60 frames per second, so we use frames to measure time when talking about moves in Tekken. These moves in Tekken have startup frames, an impact frame, and recovery frames. And when we talk about how fast a move is, we're talking about when the move impacts. So for example, a 10 frame move, like the generic jab, is faster than a 20 frame move, like this kick. Frame data nicely puts us into punishment. So let's talk about that. The fastest move every character has is the generic jab that I mentioned earlier, impacting at 10 frames. So let's look at why that's important to know. Whenever you block or hit, you receive either a frame advantage or disadvantage, depending on what move was received. This is reciprocated by your opponent, meaning that if you land a hit and are given a positive frame advantage, or in this case, plus eight, your opponent must then be in a negative frame disadvantage, or minus eight. Being plus means that your opponent will be able to act a number of frames sooner and being minus means your character will be delayed and be able to act a number of frames later. Now in this situation, if you were to block a move that puts your opponent in minus 10 or less, that means that your 10 frame jab will be able to hit your opponent before they have a chance to block. This is the essence of block punishment. Counter hits. The main reason why you can't just smash buttons and win is due to this mechanic. If an attack is landed on the player while they are currently in their startup frames, a counter hit will occur. Counter hits all do extra damage and can be drastically more powerful compared to a regular hit. Unique attack properties. Some attacks in Tekken have special properties or interactions. This adds even more complexity to the options available to both players. These are some of the type of moves that every character in the game has access to. Tracking moves will hit your opponent even while they are moving into either the foreground or background. Power crush or armor moves will absorb any mid or high but are susceptible to throws and lows. Wall spam moves will in a way stick your opponent to the wall, allowing you to perform a wall combo or follow up. Wall bounce moves are similar but will instead bounce your opponent off the wall back towards you. This again can lead to a combo or follow up. Wall crush moves landed successfully, the player will be rewarded with additional frames or positional advantage. Unblockable attacks are as you expect from the name. They are attacks that cannot be blocked, however they can be evaded, harried, and are relatively slow. Grabs are a bit more complicated and honestly, I need a good amount of time in order to thoroughly explain them. But here is the gist. Grabs are moves that are mostly all high and also cannot be blocked. If successful, they will lead into a throw sequence. 
This throw sequence, however, can be broken and escaped. To do so, you need to press the correct button in order to break the throw. There are three main kinds of wraps, each named after the buttons required to break them. One breaks, two breaks, and one plus two breaks. To differentiate them, you try to look at which arm is leading in the grab animation. Some characters even have an extendable throw sequence, but the same rules apply in order to break them. Crush moves. Tekken has a system in place that allows moves to be invincible for duration against specific moves. These moves visually usually make sense. For example, a hop kick can't get hit by a low, making it a low crush. And this move here ducks under moves, making it a high crush. Rage, Rage Art, and Rage Drive. Every character has access to Rage Mode once their health drops below 20%. When in a rage, all moves will do a bit more damage and give the character access to their rage drives and rage art. The rage drive is basically a boosted version of a move they already have that gives them some kind of utility. While rage arts are moves that lead to huge amounts of damage and are able to absorb all attacks except for other rage arts. In essence, it's a mechanic that helps for making comebacks. When rage arts hit, they usually lead into a cinematic sequence of attacks that reflect the character's fighting style or personality. And that's it! Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I really appreciate the support and I look forward to making more videos like this. If you like what you saw, please again consider to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Take care and be impetuous.